This is Andy Purwell for Boxing News. I'm joined by former world champion Charlie Edwards here at the Steel City Gym in Sheffield. Charlie, it's been a minute since I last spoke to you, since I saw you. Um, a lot to kind of touch on, so before we come on to all of that good stuff, how are you? Yeah, I'm great, thanks Andy. Um, it's good to be back on the channel and it's good to see the Boxing News channel booming in the, the sport of boxing, you know. It's a real good media channel and it um, reports nothing but the, the good and the proper stuff in boxing. Glad that you see it like that, Charlie, and um, it's good to have you on the channel uh, as well. And here we are. Um, I've just seen yourself and Sonny spar for the first time in two and a half years. A very entertaining spar on my behalf. What did you make of the six rounds you two have just shared? Yeah, it was good. You know, it was the first time in um, two and a half years, I think. It could be, could be a little bit longer, but um, it's nice to be back in the mix. Um, obviously, Sonny's been performing at the top of the game, and... Um, been putting in some top class performances at world level so it just goes to show I'm, I'm still up at world level you know um we had a great spa um first of many that's going to come obviously he's pulled me in to help him with the band fight as well one of as one of his sparring partners so yeah there's no love lost in uh, love and war as they say eh, andy um i'm going to pick up on it a couple marks there around the eyes marks. you should see the other guy come on <laughs> yeah. Nothing is bad as yours. Hey, my skin's gone soft. I haven't been hey, in the hey. ring since June. I did 12 rounds. I did 12 rounds. <laughs> Brad, <you're okay>. <laughs> <laughs> um, Charlie, let's just kind of swing it back to yourself, swing it onto your career before we have to touch on uh, Sonny's upcoming fight with Bam Rodriguez. Uh, Last time we spoke, obviously you teamed up with Joe Gallagher. Um, and all, I've seen that you two have parted ways, and obviously you're here in Sheffield. It was an interesting one for me to see because when you two teamed up, you, you said at the time like he somewhat helped you fall back in love with the sport. At a time when you didn't know where you stood with him boxing, you teamed up with him, he made you realise you had more to offer. I mean, obviously I saw some comments the other day suggesting things weren't necessarily left on the best of terms. What's kind of a backstory between yourself and Joe Gallagher deciding to split? Um, well, I think it shows nothing really did happen, did it? Things get said and you like to believe it and you get sold a dream sometimes, but did it come into fruition? Did it materialize? Um, I can't, I'll can't. ask you, did it materialize? Anything that was said? Did I get any shots or opportunities? So in my opinion, um, I'll be grateful and I'll always be thankful because I'm in the position I am now. I am in love with the sport of boxing and I'm hungrier and more passionate about the sport than ever. But not all, all what is said come, comes to light, you know, and I believe in my eyes that um, I wasn't, in my honest, humbling opinion, that I wasn't managed properly. Um, and to be honest, the way things go, I could be here all day sitting here talking the truths of the situation and everything like that, but I'm not going to leave myself in a predicament. Um, for any other issues and stallations of my career. Um, I am now a free agent managerial. I am f this morning done my boxing board of control manager's license and I will be entering the world as um, a self-managed fighter. And um, I look to be able to rebuild relationships with um, former promoters that I um, have been with and be able to, to network with people I've always got on with everyone, Andy, and um, no one has really a bad word to say about me. I never burnt no bridges on the way through. Always been grateful. Um, so it's time to just take the career into my own hands and actually make it happen for myself. And uh, with my brother flying high and, and um, being at the top of the game and really moving well, um, me, it's going to benefit me being my own management. And um, me and my brother, we always conversate and talk and discuss things together. Um, our relationship's better than it's ever been. Um, so, yeah, like we're going to guide and help each one another to go to the highest of heights and take over the sport of boxing. I mean, Charlie, I don't imagine you'll be short of offers, short of uh, people who will want to work with you as a former world champion and looking at kind of the British boxing scene at the minute, there's a lot of shows coming up, a lot of potential fights out there for you, some of which we'll touch on shortly. Um, what have any type of initial conversations been like with any promoters out there? Well, um, I got offered to fight Cal Yafai on six and a half weeks notice. So we were supposed to be fighting on the, um, the 11th of November. It's a Newcastle bill. They would think they were struggling to get things across the line. I don't know what was going on there, but they offered to me, the only fight we've got for you is Cal Yafai six and a half weeks notice. 
I went straight back and said, yeah. Didn't even ask for the money, yeah. I'm not going to price myself out of anything, you know. I know this is my golden ticket, you know. Um, I know what I'll do to Cal and I'm fully confident. Six and a half weeks notice, I accepted the fight. Trainerless, I trained, trained six days a week, yeah, week in, week out. And as you see today, inspiring that I'm performing at a very good level, um, which you said you were shocked at for being out inactive this long. So um, I've always kept myself ready to go. And I've known this whole time that if something was to come up, I'm only going to get offered that sort of time because I'm a threat. I'm, I'm high risk, low reward right now. And I'm aware of that. So, like, the money for me wasn't even the issue. I just know that it was the right opportunity to take Cal. And um, I full be believe I will knock him out and end his career. And... Um, I believe that that is why he ain't taking the fight. Like you just see announced, he got announced in um, the USA, in America, the week after the 11th of November. So when they offered me the fight, he was already in training camp. Yeah, this is, this is the, the frustrating thing, like how he can sit here and con the public, say that I'm desperate, say that I'm not worth a wank, say that he can knock me out, I'm an easy fight, I'm desperate. It's like, it's really embarrassing. And he's conning the British fans. Um, his manager, I was led to believe and was told that he was telling him and putting pressure on him, you need to take this fight. This is the perfect time, the right time um, to take this fight. He waited 24 hours to have a think about it. So he didn't dismiss it straight away. 24 hours to have a think about it. And then he, and then he rang back and simply said no. To then go and handpick an opponent over in America for a vacant title. Well, we got, we got asked to headline a show. He got offered big money. I know what he got offered. I'm not going to put anything like that. Um, he rejected the first offer. They went back and offered him more. Um, and I also know what I was prepared to do to make that fight happen. Um, and he rejected it. It's, it's embarrassing. It's not good enough. With the... the with, the way British boxing is on the circuit with the shows and the fights and the fans especially because, like, let's be real, we're in a hard time right now and it, it's very financial costing going to an event. So when the shows aren't getting put on with fights fans want to see, they're not getting sold out. They're struggling to, um, to make a big hype and that's why a lot of people are um, turning away from the boxing scene and the shows are less and less bums on sea and it's sad to see you know but it happens because british fighters ain't willing to step up like i'm a former world champion yeah cal's a former world champion he wants to go and win a bantamweight world title so the idea was for matching to put us things sink or swim come on cal do you know what i mean like don't go running off and try and w wiggle your way in to get beat somewhere else just because your pride and ego won't allow you to lose the little Charlie Edwards who you put down for all these years, someone who can't punch this, that and the other. It, it's, it's an embarrassing move. And um, he's made himself look very stupid doing this. And um, I feel like, especially how the fans have reacted, the boxing fans who want the fight to happen, they've been on him. And now I've brought this to light. He can't go no further. So let's hope his head's in a good place. He's probably not because there's a lot of people trolling the life out of him right now. And not even trolling, calling him out for what he is because he's shown his true colours. So I don't know where, it, we'll see where his performance is in the next fight. But after this fight, there's no way he can go anywhere else. I'm the only fight, I've been told I'm the only fight that's going to get offered to him. So I've got myself in a position now where his back's against the corner. And um, yeah, I'm ready to go. So hopefully that will happen. It's obviously a fight which has been spoken about for a few years now, Charlie. With that in mind, provided he comes through November 18th unscathed, do you think it's realistic, whether it be early or maybe say April, May time next year, you two do cross paths? I've been told first quarter. I've been told that. So um, I see Eddie put something out the other day. Um, Eddie Home, I think it was with another channel, um, and they asked about it, and he said, "I oh, will get Charlie a fight." So I'm hoping I'll be able to get a fight before Christmas as well. Um, if not, got no qualms about it. I'm good to go. Do you know what I mean? And if I don't get a fight before Christmas, I'll probably use the time wisely to go and get some world-class sparring in over in America or something while I'm out there supporting my brother. So um, it's it's one of them. I think it I think it will happen. I don't think he can go anywhere else. So providing that he doesn't go out and get beat or providing um, 
that he doesn't retire after the fight. I think that's all there is for him. Just to kind of swing back to yourself and where things stand on currently on a, a trainer's front, where are you at with that and your, your search for a new trainer? Um, I'm in a position right now where I, I ain't rushing or making no decisions. Had I put the fight on six and a half weeks notice, I had a few trainers lined up that I could have flying, flown out in, into Portugal um, to train me for the six and a half weeks to go into the fight. I know... I know how to beat Cal. I know I've, I've studied him for years and years and years. You know, with the right tactics and stuff, which we would collaborate on, I would have beat him, and I, and I believe I would have knocked him out. However, um, I'm still in thinking about um, trainers. Like I don't want to rush this one, um, but I'm being busy. Like I'm back down here at Steel City. You know, like I formerly trained with Grant, um, so it's been good to touch base back with him um, and just come here sparring with Sonny. I'm going to be o over in Tenerife helping Sonny out for the BAM fight. So, so who knows what what can happen or what cannot happen. Um, however, I would, in my mindset, I'm over in Portugal. I've got a, um, um, a daughter who's coming up free in December, a wife who's over in Portugal. I've set my home up in Portugal and you've seen it probably online. It's a lovely place where I've, I've made my gym in, in my house. Um, it's got two bags. It's got full kitted out strength and conditioning, treadmill, um, rower, cross trainer. Um, I've got a guest house on side of my house where it can sleep up to six people. So my idea is to do build my own team and my own camp. I'm fed up of being amongst like like a, a, a gym full of people and getting no time. Like so I I'd I, I know next next stage of my career I feel like I have to build a build a, a good my own squad, you know, and, and like the Americans do, make it like an in sat camp, you know, I live and breathe the life of boxing. It'd be nice to be my wife's a nutritionist as well by trade, um, also studying psychology. So like, it's good to have my, my support network around me. Um, can fly sparring partners in. There's a great gym out there called um, Fight Algarve Academy, which is great. We've got the ring. And it's even to the point where with my gaff over there, eight-week training camp, I'd, I'd put an, uh, my own ring in my own garden like and proper base it. It's got like a real kind of big bear feel. Um, my, my place would be called the Eagle's Nest, um, but yeah, that's that's the plan. Just giving it away, there. Someone's going to take that off, you know. No, they can't. <laughs> they can't take it off me. Um, Charlie, just kind of while Sonny's there, uh, you've mentioned kind of rekindling together now. You're sparring, but what was that? Well, it must have been about six months ago over social media. We saw somewhat, I don't know whether for that's the right word, but people kind of questioning what the relationship was like between the pair of you. Where are things at between yourself and your brother now? This is what it is, right? It's the perfect thing. We're, me and my brother are very, very close. And we, yeah, the little thing back then, there might have been little bits in it that was a bit, got a bit out of line. Um, but it worked well. It worked well for him. For me, it kept my name relevant. Um, it made his name even bigger. People started looking at him more in a positive light, um, which he deserves because he's a top lad, top, a, a good guy, got a very big heart and cares for a lot of people. So it's, um, it was good. It kept the Edwards name booming more than ever. Um, it kept people thinking, kept the gossip going, kept people talking. Everyone kept asking. So um, it was, it worked out the way it worked out. And um, yeah, we're, we're better than we've ever been. Um, I think, like, probably it may have, the situation, brought us closer than we've ever been because now we're seeing each other as two separate adults. We're not in this, like, little young boy kind of mentality of growing up, this, that and the other. We've had time apart and we've come back together and we've we've developed a relationship. I've, I've spent a few times here in Sheffield staying at his and, and we've really spent some good quality time together and, you know, um, the future's bright. You paying him rent? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm paying him in sparring partner. Uh, we help each other out through thick and thin, you know what I mean? Um, Charlie, just obviously, what, as you mentioned, you're helping him prepare for that Bam Rodriguez fight. He's got everybody talking in the UK. Uh, potentially a great fight to end the year on and with a boxing schedule. I know you're obviously going to back your brother to the hill and back to come out on top, but how does he go about defeating Bam Rodriguez? Um, like, don't get twisted. Like, this is his toughest fight. Fact, best first the best. You can't get no bigger and better than that. Um, however, I do believe Sonny will win. Um, 
I think it will be a very tricky, tricky night test. Um, I'm hoping and praying that the, um, the judges, like looking back at some of the fights that have just gone over on in America, I hope the judges are going to be fair and square with it. Um, I just don't think Bam's going to have met anyone like Sonny. His elusiveness, his, the way his style, his confidence, his ring, ring IQ. Um, Bam's great. Very, very good fighter. But the, the 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 fighters that he had beat weren't in their prime. Um, they weren't firing all cylinders, and they were made for him. Um, the switch of the angle terrorised them. Um, he was too young, too fresh, and yeah, he can punch as well. So um, I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a very like high intense chess match in there. Um, there will be some sticky moments which he may have to get through, but um, I am full confidence that he will. Um, Sonny's a special fighter. I've been saying this for years and years and years. He's like he is like a Floyd Mayweather, and people used to laugh and joke and take the piss when I used to come out with that. But I believe in everything, all his abilities. I've seen him mix it in all different levels, um, and he's always done the same. And I don't think this will be no different. People certainly recognise Sonny as one of the best fighters domestically, to the very least. With that in mind, if he beats Bam, does he become, in your opinion, the best fighter in the UK at least? Oh, 100%. 100%. I, I, like, it's hard, always hard to say the best fighter in the UK, obviously, because we've got like, the Tyson Furies of the world, and like, it's hard to argue against that. Um, but Sonny is right up there, and I, I do firmly believe that um, no one is going to ever work Sonny out in 12 rounds. And I can stand up and bet my, bet my house sort of thing on it, and... Um, Let's hope he don't go <laughs> and don't get me out taken off me in the next fight. But I, I'm full confidence that he will get an Edwards win. Uh, Charlie, just one fight away from you all. I just want to get your thoughts on because it's the week before Sonny fights Haney Progray. Don't know whether you guys might try and travel out just to watch that one and then obviously travel back for the remainder of your camp. But your take on Devin Haney versus, versus Regis Progray? Um, I think it's a fucking belt of fight, to be honest. I think it's great. Um, and this is what boxing needs, proper fights. And that's a big, a proper fight. Um, I think Haney's always is like, just kind of one step ahead, you know, like he doesn't produce like spectacular like one-sided beatdowns or like big knockouts or whatnot. But he just knows how to win. And if it looks a bit close, it doesn't matter because he's won. Um, but then Progress has got the real dog in him and he's got points to prove. So I really don't know how that fight will go. Um, it's going to be a tough one. Hain Haney is very clever, though, and he always seems to be just that little step in front of everyone. But I, I, I couldn't really go against thing. But if I, if I had to, I probably would go towards Devon. Charlie, I appreciate your time today. I'm leaving out to have to shoot off. Enjoy what is remaining of it. Thank you for speaking to me and hopefully see you in a ring soon. Oh man, thank you.